that do various things. So a lot of them focus on these four sections. So understanding the applications on the phone, understanding the shared uh, sorry the system services, um, any binaries or shared libraries, and also any Linux devices. Uh, so that's kind of from a software stack perspective, the highest level moving down towards the kernel. Uh, and those are the areas that I like to focus on when I'm testing advice because there's holes all over the place there. Um, when I created them, the, the question that I really wanted to answer was this, this one here. What did the OEMs add or change to Android? Uh, and is it vulnerable? So all the, all the OEMs start out by using the Android Open Source Project, and then they, they add on this, and they'll have this company create this app, uh, and it ends up with this big bloated operating system that looks not much like Android to the breaker. Um, so I want to understand what's changed there, because the OEMs are not, are not as good at security as them. So the, the testing process, how I actually went through and did the testing. Um, this was boring. I just you know installed the two apps, the recap and trustable, um, and they just they ran. You get a score for trustable, so it's semi trustable. This one, that's a screenshot of it. Uh, you know, looking for the versions there. Um, getting into more of the manual testing, uh, I actually just pushed this link about an hour ago, so I give you eight minutes of time. Um, but if you're going to use the tools I have, you have to do a lot of pre-processing, and this command is really ugly, which is a better way to do it now. Uh, but what you're doing is using all those modules we're talking about to, to basically pull content off the device and then process it, almost all of it to a database, so you can query it, index it, do all that stuff like that. Um, and this is it's, that looks crazy. That's, those are the things you have to run um, if you want to get to this point. And I have now processed all that that does this for you, so you don't have to do that. Uh, so I'm not going to really talk too much about pulling stuff off. Um, it's not really exciting. What I do want to talk about is actually doing the testing and what you can look for. Um, so as far as applications on a device, there's usually hundreds of them on even these small Chinese phones. <coughs> so if anyone who's done any Android development or Android pen testing, um, there's concept of components, which is what makes up an Android application. So you have activities, which are your visual components, services, which are things that are running in the background, Receivers, which are listening for uh, system events, such as an incoming text message, and you have content providers, which are data stores. Um, and you can share them between applications. That's why Android's cool, because you can say, hey, I have a, a text message database, and I want to write a texting app that uses that data. And you can do that given the permissions model. Um, but a lot of times, things are shared that either shouldn't be, or they're shared with the wrong permissions. So that leads me to the second one the permission issues are huge. Uh, when you have hundreds of apps on a phone, there's going to be tons that just have incorrect permissions, missing permissions, etc. And finally, uh, privileged applications is a huge attack vector for somebody who's either writing malware or who wants to root a phone. Uh, these are the apps you're going to look into because they're running under privileged IDs like system, or radio, or phone. So, uh, some examples here if you wanted to enumerate the components that are exposed in an application, you can use a sysappdb module. And what this is going to do is it's going to look for export issues. So if you have something that's exported that shouldn't be, it's going to print out for you right here. And it's going to say, hey, um, in the application com Android system UI, which is a privileged system process, um, there's a new database that was not part of Android that's been added by the OEMs called the Flow Window Provider. And furthermore, it has no read or write permissions. So that's kind of concerning what's in there. So if you want to look into it, you can use Grozier get a shell on your device, and then query that database. And uh, what this actually is, once I dug into it, is it's the layout of the home screen. So <laughs> these are the, um, the URLs, I guess, URIs for the, the uh, actual activity that gets launched when you press a button on it. So you can actually fully manipulate the home screen of all five of these phones just by manipulating this database. So you can think of if you get an app on the phone and the user is using like a Bank of America app, I can have my fake Bank of America app replace it, and then they pop up credentials, and they actually give me the credentials, and then I just you know launch the Bank of America one or something. So this this is a problem. You can actually rewrite that. Oh, that's kind of hard to read. Um, permissions. So I just mentioned that there wasn't free to write permissions, but so I, I even highlighted it there. Um, but this is the actual uh, definition for that provider, and it's a little hard to read, but there are reading write permissions here. So how come I said there were none? Um, it turns out that just because you say a permission is required to access something, it doesn't mean that it has to actually exist somewhere. 
So you can you can use the permissions module to list out permissions. And here I am just listing them and I'm looking for that specific permission, and it doesn't exist anymore. No one has defined that permission yet. So what you can do as a malicious app is just say, hey, I'm going to define the com Android launcher permissions out read settings, and I'm going to grant myself access to it. And now there's been nothing's going to stop you from actually interacting with that content right now. So it's essentially not having permissions. Some other cool things you can do with the permissions module is you can also look at what components are secured by a permission. So in the last example, the, the read settings one, if I want to find out every um, sort of component that I can interact with that is secured by that permission, I can look it up here. It turns out that that was the only one, but here's just an example of all of the components that want you to possess the Android permission read SMS. So to read its SMS messages, and it's no surprise those were all the databases there. However, it is worth noting that the bottom four are all added by the OEMs. So the first three, I just know from doing testing, those are Android databases. And there's four more that need description. So I'm not really sure what's in there. We can look. Uh, and the final thing that permission is cool to do is you can look at which apps are showing that they want access to a permission. So in this example, I'm looking at all apps that want to have the mount unmount file system. So it's a system level permission that Usually it's only needed for like over the air updating app. But how about this one? The, the FM radio app wants to remount my file system, and that's, I don't know, I, I don't think that that should be available for that. Or the file manager, or all those other kinds of things. And then you can kind of piggyback that on with the shared IDs I mentioned. So um, those four IDs there, the system, radio, phone, and media, are all privileged processes that run under different contexts. If you have a system level app, it's essentially root without actually being root. So you, at that point, you already have access to the entire Android sandbox. You can do anything except basically root the phone in terms of having, um, the, the highest You can do everything else if you want to. Um, so this is just me listing all the apps that are running as system. So the top 10 are ones that are part of Android, so actually part of Google's code. And the bottom 12, 10, are ones that the OEMs have added. So those are the ones you want to focus on. You want to take these and you want to use that uh, SysAppDB module to look at the attack surface of these because these are the ones where if you find a vulnerability, it's going to be something big. Um, moving on to frameworks, the second area I mentioned was useful to look into. Um, the big things here, frameworks are basically everything you can uh, program off of or what's actually running in the system context. So uh, system services, everything in Android is basically backed by a system service that are permission, of course, if you want to get the phone number, if you're using an API that's essentially calling back to your system service. Uh, and there's tons of vulnerabilities in system services. That's just been by, by nature that there's not as good of permission checks available for developers for system services. Uh, and the second one is modifications to the platform that XML file, which I'll talk about in a few slides. But just know that these are the sort of the APIs and the things you can actually develop against and the system services. Uh, with the framework DB module, you can list all the added frameworks that, that are part of the device. So um, the, under the boot class path ones, those are ones that are available to the zygote, which means you can actually use those methods. You see the Google ones on there, which is no surprise. The Maps API is obviously part of the phone, but not part of the original Android. Uh, then there's some other ones, you know, like software, DRM, uh, custom prop interface. Like You can look in that framework and see what the APIs available are, and it might do something that um, you don't want a normal app to be able to do. Um, system services. The SysService DB module lets you list OEM added system services. So here's a list of about 20 or so added system services. So these are new things that you can actually interact with. Potentially, there might be permissions. Um, one that I want to highlight here, which I think is kind of funny, is this one called a memory dumper service. And if you look at the Java class path, it's android.memory.imemorydumper. But that's not an Android service. That's something that the OEMs added, and they just call it Android, so you wouldn't think it's suspicious. I mean, if anything, it would be common Android. So I thought it was funny that there's a memory dumping service on all these phones. Um, moving on, if you find another system service, for example, the search engine one was in the last slide, uh, you can then use the SysService DB module again to show the actual API. So the, the search engine system service has five methods you can call. And so by looking at it here, you see get default search engine, set default search engine, uh, get best matching, etc. Um, then you can go ahead and you can just call these. So you can 
use uh, the built-in tool service, which is on every phone on the command line, or you can write a Java app and just interact with them that way. Um, what you can see here, I'm calling the get default search engine, and it's printing google.com. Um, but as I mentioned, there is a set default search engine on here, which also doesn't enforce any permissions, which means that I can rewrite this to be uh, mywebsite.com, and then when the user searches for something, it's going to default to my website, and I'm going to see what they're doing, and I can just go you know, forward back to Google or something. Uh, and this was also on all five phones, so that's um, the last thing we'll talk about with system services is you can also look at what changes have been made to Android system services. So the power service is used for like controlling the, uh, the screen, rebooting the device, etc. Um, these are all the APIs that they added to the power service, and we'll circle back around, but you can look at all of them. Uh, the takeaway is it's best to just run slash slash all, because there's going to be, on most flagships, hundreds of system services, and there's like, you know, between 10 and 100 API calls for each of them and who knows what they do. Um, I mentioned the platform that XML file really quickly earlier, and I'm gonna talk a little bit about it here. It's a really low level file on Android that maps a Linux group to a permission. This is how the internet permission works on Android. So if, you're, if you ask for the internet permission, it's gonna add you to the INET Linux group, which is a group that's allowed to create sockets in the kernel. Um, and it's also vice versa. If you are in a group, you can use gain these permissions that are listed here. So you can look at changes that are made here. And I'm going to leave this on for just a second, but there's some interesting things to look at here in terms of the OEM added mappings there, in terms of the permissions and what groups you get added to by having them. Uh, like I said, we'll get back to that. Um, if you want to look at system libraries, which are you know, shared object files that potentially have a JNI interface or a Java native interface, like it's just too many interfaces there, but um, these are methods, these are libraries that you can potentially call from Java that, uh, given the right circumstances, like the importing socket or importing an optal, could be communicated to the kernel. Whenever I see an optal import, I assume that it's doing some sort of kernel interaction, and if there's a Java interface, I mean, that's something that I want to look into. So here's one here, the com media tech engineer mode, um, and there's some various USB methods here. This doesn't help me find out where this actually exists in an application, but I can use a different module to actually find it. So I can say, hey, sh across all the applications on this phone, tell me where native in it is a method. And it's like, boom, here it is, Tom Media Tech Engineering Mode, it takes a couple seconds, because it's all process and index forms. And then we can look into that app and understand how these methods are being used. Um, and the last thing is system devices. So if anyone's familiar with uh, Linux device drivers, these are ways for you to do low level things like file systems and communicate with the kernel. Um, you could potentially have exposed device drivers by either having a uh, non-zero other group. So in Linux, you have an like owner group, other. You could have a, a you know, lax setting there, or you could just have a bad owner. Like if the owner is system and the group is INET, that means any app that has the internet connection can talk to this device driver. Uh, and there's a lot of phones that actually get rooted because of that. Uh, this one is starting to go away because of uh, SE Android. They're really pushing for OEMs to have good policy on devices because they know it's such a big deal. Uh, so on newer phones like uh, Lollipop and going forward, a lot of devices are not accessible to a like, shell user or just a regular app. So it's a bummer. But these phones are cute, so pretty simple. All right, so now getting on to more of the exciting thing that I was probably the beat there, but uh, the results of the case study. Uh, this is just some general information I have on phones. Uh, I list, like I said, I listed the LG G4 on there as a baseline. Uh, all five phones have the same kernel version and they're the same API and API tree. So that's those first two columns. Four out of five of them is, is kind of alarming. When I purchased the phones, plugged it in, it was already pre-configured for me. So you know, when we buy a new phone, it'll say like, hey, welcome to Android, let's set up your accounts and stuff. These were already set up. It was at the home screen ready to go. I was like, okay. It's a little strange. Four out of five of them had USB debugging on by default. So it was already, once I plugged it in, it already started installing drivers and I'm like, oh, shit, I should have done that. Um, and one of them, it had developer options enabled, but USB debugging wasn't on. So the duty of there is actually the best one so far. Uh, and the last column is uh, test keys. And this, I couldn't even believe this one. So the test keys means that the platform, the actual OS, is signed by Google's public key available on the Android Open Source project. So that means everyone who wants to go to online can get that public or sorry, private key and actually uh, sign your own application. And now you have a system level app on those two phones. 
So the phone is already rude without doing any analysis. There's probably apps out there on the internet that are signed by those uh, private keys. So that was bad. Um, in terms of content on the device, I'm not going to go over all of these. These are just the five areas I kind of touched on, um, and some numbers of how many there are. But one thing I want to point out here is look at the LG compared to all the Chinese phones. The LG has twice as many applications, <laughs> twice as many framework files, and 1.6 times as many system services. So it was only about 20 added from you know the, the emulator to the, the Doogie, but there was 70 added more than the emulator. So there's 70 LG system services, so a lot more content on the LG. Um, in terms of recap, there's no surprise here, they're all basically pieces of junk, right? They, these are all Linux kernel vulnerabilities. There's 83 of them. It's across all, all uh, five of them. Uh, and there was one for the LG, and I'm pretty sure that was a false positive. So there's another, if you didn't have enough reasons to be able to root these, now you have a lot more CVEs that you can play with. Uh, I mentioned the trustable app, trustable scores. Um, only one of mine got suspicious. The other four got semi-trustable, and the LG got trustable. Uh, what that meant was, um, here are just some of the highlights. And again, the type of test, <laughs> that was good. Um, all six of the phones that you flew VLG had a large number of CA certs, which means it trusts a lot of things like uh, government agencies and uh, you know, .edu's and stuff like that. Probably not needed for production phones, but it's, it's a lower issue if anything. Uh, four out of five of them had known vulnerabilities. This is in addition to the kernel ones. This is like the Android master key, uh, towel room, all those fun things. So you know, four out of five, you could also read that way. The two of them had five unrecognized keyboards, where these are not Google standard keyboards or somebody else added this keyboard. And that's kind of scary, because the keyboard can obviously capture your keystrokes. Um, so it might be interesting for me to look into the Kubu and Vigu, uh, see if they have uh, any sort of malware running with the keyboards. Uh, the last file, again, even the LG found was spelled like into this. There's a large amount of apps that have system level permissions. Um, and that, you see that across all kinds of phones. I mean, on these ones, there was probably 10, 12, and on the LG, there's like 30 system level apps, and they're just like random things on there. All right, now I think the most fun thing is the results of the manual testing I did. So, actually going through uh, and looking at the device, uh, using my tools, and testing that way. Um, there were so many more that I didn't have room to fit, didn't have time to talk about. Um, but I included them all on here, the ones that I found the best. And we're going to go through each of these. Uh, so the first one I found was the, uh, it's, a limit, it's a device driver issue uh, for a dev logo. And I kind of looked up what that was. And it looks like it's meant to serve an image to you when you read from it. So if you read from it for like uh, two megs or something, it returns like the boot animation image. But there's like no bound checks on this, and it's world readable. So what it does, if you read from this, it just starts walking with flash, and it starts you know, serving up for you. And when I tested it, I got to like several gigs of data just as the shell user here. Uh, and in the example, I just created a file on the SD card, and then I ran strings on the output, and there's my data. So you could, you could theoretically find any content on the device in this dump here, and you can just run this in the background while you're you know, just sitting there. Uh, only the Kubu is vulnerable to this one. So that's good, only one. Um, the second one, system level access using the uh, permission I was talking about. So I, I want to save the surprise for now, but this OEM added permissions is, if you have the access MTK MM HW permission, you automatically add it to the system, media, and camera. And uh, the tool is nice enough to tell you that that's only a normal level permission. So you have permissions with varying levels. You have normal, which is basically no no alert to the user when apps is closed with it. You have dangerous, which is going to say, hey, you know, it's going to read your SMS. And then you have signature or system, which are ones that third party apps can't possess. But normal is basically nothing. It's like, yeah, anyone can have it, that's fine. So just by saying I want this permission, you're automatically a system app. So I just wrote an app and had execute commands, and I just ran an ID, and boom, I'm like, system here, I have everything. And that's all five phones. It's like, is that, is this a joke? I've never even seen anything that bad. I was so shocked. But if that wasn't enough, system access again using a different method. And this one, I think, is even more suspicious. So this is a system level application. I basically did what I talked about. I listed the privilege apps, and then I ran uh, that exposure module to show the exposure element. 
So here's one, it's, it's, a, it's a broadcast receiver, so it's listening for commands. It's literally called write command receiver, um, and it accepts an argument called CMD, and it broadcasts. <laughs> so here's me writing the file to a privileged directory, and there it is, test system. So again, I mean, these are huge issues. I can't imagine why you need something like this. I mean, it looks like it's supposed to be some sort of uh, over the air update, because it does say uh, FLTA there, but I don't know, it's, it's, it's crazy. Uh, now again, all five phones. Um, screen capture on the, uh, the Doogie phone. There's a method added to a system service. This is a Android system service, the status bar, which is obviously the status bar on top. Um, they added a method called take HCT screenshot, and there's no permission checks on this, and you call it, it takes a screenshot, store it on the SD card for you, conveniently. Um, and you can just keep running that. The screen. Uh, only one phone will hold that one. This one was kind of fun, not the end of the world in terms of security, uh, but the, the Doogie phone came with this like app lock feature. It's like, hey, you want to protect your apps by running this, set up a password, and then no one can access the internet. So um, I just enabled it on the browser, I launched the browser, and then it's like, hey, I need a password. And if you actually interact with the app on the command line, you could use another app if you wanted to. We call the app lock boot complete receiver, that's spelled right. And there's a null pointer exception there that causes the app to crash, and then the browser is ready for us to go. So it just, just overlays it and it dies. <laughs> um, and then the last one I just have on your list that was kind of fun was uh, this denial of service one, uh, another system service, the power service. I, I showed it earlier, but there's an API called set back like write this off that also doesn't have any permission. So when you call this, it just turns the back light off, it turns the display off. There's nothing you can do except call it again or pull the battery out because it just, the buttons no longer respond, you can't use the screen, and the phone is just like in an off state until you, uh, until you change it. And again, that's all five phones. So if you just kind of recap all these things that just went over here, you can do all these things as an app that literally requests one permission and it's that system permission. That's all you need. You can do all these things. And that to me is like really, that's really scary that you can do all these things. One quick question. Um, I'm not really like Android course so yes. I'm not sure the implication of that. Is, is that an Android thing or in the changes they make? It's the changes. So everything I've talked about here is either something added or changed by the OEMs. But, um, Plus, you're still working within the Android framework. It's so still, it's, so it's like if you put, they're all taking the same project, and then they add content to it, and the content that they add is what's the vulnerable one. So it's like a custom Linux distro. Yeah, it'd be like that feels like an Linux and introduce vulnerabilities into it. Right. So it's interesting because of the power service, for example, is a privileged service. You need to have permissions to interact with this. But the way that system services work is that. When you call an API, you have to manually check, hey, who's calling me and do they need, do they have permission? It's not something automatic. So the other, I don't know, 20 or 30 methods of the power service are permissioned out. But these ones aren't, because these ones are just ones they added, they don't know how to do security. They just add these here, and that lets you get into that privileged area. So Which is that sounds like an Android thing. I mean, it should be, it should make it should be easier and more well known for the OEMs. Um, which is why I try to find these and report them. But I mean, it's just, I guess you have to know these things. If you're going to be building a phone, I hope you know the platform security model. So you, have, you should know that you can't just change this file. And, you know, it, it, and this file is funny too, the platform that XML. There's a huge warning in front of it. It's like, do not, under any circumstances, edit this file. Like, <laughs> do not change this file. And then you see this, and you're like, damn, that's funny. Um, does, that, does that help? I mean, I think, yeah. I mean, it, it is an issue with, I guess, the way they're using Android, but it's not like a ton of vulnerability that reports to, to Google. It's like getting a Linux computer with WordPress streams all on it. <laughs> yeah, right, right. I mean, it's something that they've done that's making it insecure, okay. which is unfortunate. Okay. <laughs> so, um, over the course of your claim, like all these things have been introduced, and um, it, in my mind, it calls to like, Okay, what's the intent? Like, is there actually intent? Like, is this done because of like a lack of knowledge? Or are they actually like saying, we're gonna make people pay 
for us to exploit them. Like, so I mean, <laughs> I'm going to leave that open. Like, I don't know. I mean, I'm hoping that these are just them not knowing how to do security. But these are cheap phones from China. And, you know, say what you want. I thought one because you bought it basically. Yeah, I mean, you pay for it and then make you pay for it basically. I mean, there's a lot of things you could do with these. I mean, I, I'm going to try to report these, but I mean, who knows where that will go? I, mean, I don't even know who to report to. Which is something I'm going to talk about in another slide, but. I mean, yeah, I don't know if these are there on purpose or if they're there for other reasons or if they just don't know what they're doing with it. Some of them are so obvious that I don't know. I don't know how you really mess that up. Uh, yeah, sorry, one quick question. Uh, so it looks like across the five variable devices, there are a lot of the same vulnerabilities or same APIs or whatever introduced. Do you have any idea, like, are they sharing code? Yeah, that's like what that? I'm going to talk about right now. Right, so um, before I said, though, I just have this here, just to answer my last question. I don't I would not recommend any of these for I wouldn't do my hand level, my friends. I would not recommend anybody use these phones. Regardless of how cheap they are, they're they're really bad. And um, just some takeaways here. Um, there's some huge holes across all of them. Uh, system level access, multiple vectors, weak OEM security controls in the application space, kernel vulnerabilities, operating system vulnerabilities, crazy stuff there. Um, and getting back to this question over here, not nearly as much content added by other phones, and it's all added by this media tech company. Uh, so I look, I kind of look into it, and they make chips, so like a huge Taiwanese chip manufacturer, and they have all their code on GitHub. So they have like, it looks like the Android code, but it's definitely some project that media tech's done. And I, I think these phone companies, they just fork off that, and that's what they know. And it's like inherently vulnerable because of issues in media tech's code. Um, a lot of these phones they didn't even have like websites. They're operating out of like eBay stores and like uh, I don't know if it's from like Taobao or Tmall, like just crazy uh, Chinese e-commerce e stores. So like they probably just are some random people who generate they make phones and they just copy made tech and they compile that and then they're done. Like they don't do anything else. Um, so yeah, I, I I was a little disappointed because I was expect I was hoping that when I got these phones they'd be kind of you know different and unique and have all these different things. But as I was testing, I'm like, oh, I found a vulnerability. Okay, it's on all five. Oh, I found another one. Okay, this one's on all five. And I'm like, can I find anything that's like just this one only? And there was only a few. I mean, there was, that one device was only on one of them. The app lock thing was only on one of them. Um, but yeah, it's just the way it came down to it. Uh, and then I've already said this, but like, I just wonder if these are, some of these are intentional. I'm, I'm assuming the device one is probably a mistake, but the, the, the right command operator one is. I don't know. What would happen if you could start submitting pull requests and seeing if anything got accepted? Because if they went and won't vulnerable intentionally, they might not accept it. Yeah, so that, that's, I was, so like I was saying, I'm not sure if I should submit these bugs to MediaTek or the phone company. Just commit some belts and I'll search the packs to their GitHub. Yeah, I can try it. I mean, what, do you, what do you need if you're testing show um, data being sent off the phone? Uninitiated. Um, so the one thing that I did look for, um, I didn't look for like data theft. But what I looked for was uh, usage of these endpoints. So for example, uh, that one permission that grants you system access, I looked to see if any app is actually requesting access to that, because then um, maybe that could mean someone is using this. There wasn't any apps on any of the phones that were using it, and I couldn't find any evidence of any app using that uh, right command operator or right the command. However. Who knows? I mean, there could be obfuscation in there. There could be encryption. Like, I'm just running string search across source files. Like, I mean, there's millions of files probably at that point. There's no way I can I can find out without without modifying the runtime and doing some like hooking or any sort of instrumentation to find out if they're actually calling the endpoint. But just had a quick overview. I didn't see anyone actually like, abusing these things on the phone. But that doesn't mean that you know, if I'm in China and I download some app, who knows? They might be using them. So. I, I mean, I didn't look for a game at that time, personally. But that, that's something else that's definitely worth looking into. Just start, you know, proxy traffic off these phones and just see how many of the apps are not doing the certain thing correctly. It's probably everything. You can probably see clear text stuff going off the phone all the time. Um, that's something that I have been uh, meaning to do. It just wasn't part of the initial testing. But definitely something interesting to look into. More from the malware data that kind of side of it. Um, and that's kind of all I got. So I was going to finish a few minutes early. Um, do you guys have any questions or comments in addition? Would you trust the hardware to put your own on? I don't know. That's I wouldn't even I don't know nothing about that stuff to be able to make a decision, but 
Probably not. I don't know. I wouldn't trust any of these phones for any reason at this point. So, and, but MediaTek's big though. Like if you actually look them up, they make a lot of processors, and they're actually even in some like HTC phones are MediaTek processors. Mm -hmm. So I mean, they're they're big companies, not as much here in the US. Yeah. So uh, the thing is, experiments with what you just exposed on them. Um, would you actually use one of these offensively in a red team engagement? Yeah, you probably could. I mean, I have these phones, I have nothing to do with now. Like, I just have all these phones. That's some like killer backdoor commands. I mean, yeah, you could do a lot of really cool stuff with an app that looks like it does nothing. I mean, it could be a flashlight app. Have you pitched this talk to front line? I haven't pitched this talk to anyone except you guys. So, we'll <laughs> get the first round here. Um, but yeah, I mean, I, I plan on trying to report these. I have no idea how far I'll get or if they'll even listen. I don't, I don't even know, like, what email address to send them to. And they'll just comment on their email. Like, <laughs> Were you satisfied? No. No. <laughs> Report one that they can hide better and see if they do that. Yeah. <laughs> I guess I could, I could do that too. Yeah, but uh, I haven't really decided too much yet. I'll in there. I, I guess the one thing that would be interesting to know would be if you went to the media tag GitHub source and we've on this, and if you kind of took it and compiled it in the most easiest, straightforward fashion possible, would you get these results? I mean, I can definitely compare and check. I would say yes. I would. I would say so, that. It leaves me wondering: Is this just, you know, the sort of incompetence you get from trying to do this? You know, two guys in a garage, yes. buying hardware really cheap, yeah. and doing it that way versus real malicious intent, at least on the part of the people that are selling it through eBay, maybe you know, media tech or whatever else. I, I, I couldn't say, but. Just sure. Yeah, I mean, this slide right here really puts it in perspective for me. Some of these phones have the exact same amount of everything, down to the same amount of binaries in the bin directory, same amount of SO files. Like that's, that to me means they're just two guys in their garage. They have this piece of hardware, they go to a media tech site, pull it off, and then they compile it, and then they sell it as they do. Like that's, that's their phone. Um, very few of them had a lot of added content. So I, I, I've been the OEMs, so Google, Google, they're probably, in my mind, not the malicious ones, but the, the stuff in the media tech changes to Android, I think, is more kind of scary. I, these people probably don't even know if they're going to try to make some money, really. They probably realize they can monetize all fake devices on eBay. People maybe our aunts and uncles don't even realize they're buying a fake phone. Trying to spot them for that. Yeah, <laughs> they just try to make a quick buy, guys. Um, yeah, who's, but I, most, who's most likely to make money? From an exploited or exploitable device beyond just the, you know, as absolute cheap as possible because we're just going to put this out. It's going to make money. I mean, I don't, I don't actually know who uses these phones. Like, I don't actually know anyone who's like, hey man, I got my new Empi phone. And it's cool. <laughs> and I, don't, I don't know who's buying these phones. So like. Putting it in perspective, it's not the end of the world telling a black man talk where I'm like, yeah, we have 600 million phones and swipe. I mean, it's, it's small stuff, but it's kind of still fun. Um, not a $2 phone, right? yeah. Yeah. compared to $200 in the contract. Yeah. Or, or, or. So, I mean, you see the appeal. Yeah. Um, um, and exactly. They did the work. If MediaTek would have these issues in Demic Duet, you could see that it would just cost that much more money to, to, to fix these issues. Right now, you have four guys in the garage. Yeah. And, you know, so. Yeah. And, um, it, it, but it's, it's very interesting. Yeah, and that media, that one commission that's there, that's on almost every media tech phone. So there actually are quite a bit of media tech phones. If you put all these five brands and then the hundreds of other, like, no name brands and random ones, I mean, even like, uh, I think, like, what are the other three ones? Huawei and Z, ZTE, I think they also use media tech processors. So they might also be vulnerable because of this. So, I mean, I. I haven't done any research outside of these, uh, but, excuse me, these five phones, but it could be pretty widespread that every phone from China is you not know, a system access to that one issue, but I don't know, I still wouldn't trust them. <laughs> um, any other questions? All right, um, I'll be around for a while tonight, so if anyone has any questions or wants to talk about anything, um, I do I kind of blew through the first part, but I think it's still pretty good at the end. Here's some links if you want to get a hold of me. Um, my blog, I don't really post too much on anymore because I'm so busy, but um, I did just redo my entire website. I said I pushed it a couple hours ago. Uh, so if there's any bugs, I'm sorry. Um, 
but there is a lot of documentation I added for the tools I've written because everyone's like, wow, this is really cool. How do I use it? And I'm like, well, you got to run like 40 commands and then run this one. They're like, yeah, I'm not going to use this then. So I figured I'd make some documentation so people can actually want to use it. And you know, if people use it, we can fix the bugs and make it better. Um, but yeah, that's, that's all I got, guys. So thanks. Bye.